Hello everyone, I'm Christine. This video is about a talk on how will data analytics help my business to grow. This is about me. I've been teaching computing modules for the last 26 years in a university college. I hold a PhD in Intelligent Tutoring Systems, which is related to the field of Artificial Intelligence or AI. AI is about making intelligent machines like robots or intelligent software like face recognition or voice recognition. Currently, I'm an adjunct associate professor and a tech advisor. I conduct online courses and oversee the design and development of an educational platform. In this talk, I will be sharing these buzzwords with you. Big data, data analytics, and data science. We will also discover how these five big companies use big data analytics in their business. At the end, I will share with you about my online programming course. Let's start with a basic question. What is data? Data is defined as facts or figures that store in or used by a computer. It can be text, images, audio, and video. We use data every day. Here are some examples of data. Our email, address book, student details, employee details, and also customer data. When we add the word big to data, it basically means extremely large data sets that may be analyzed computationally to review patterns, trends, and relationships. Data that are related to human behavior and interactions are very useful for business and organizations. Here's a simple definition of big data. Big data is larger and more complex data set. Where do we get all this data? Where do all this data come from? Large amounts of data are collected from various interactions. Data come from our search result, social network communications like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and so on. And data also is being collected by sensors and CCTV. Do you know that every one minute or 60 seconds, tons and tons of data are created on the internet? Data is being generated every second. Digital pictures and videos, social media lights, purchase transactions, advertisement clicks, streaming content, and much more. So data never sleeps. Let's learn the characteristics of big data by considering the six Vs of big data. First of all, volume. So we have seen that there's a large amount of data that's been collected from multiple resources. Variety here refers to the types of data. Data can be structured, for example, a customer database, or semi-structured, like the data that we have in Excel or CSV files. Unstructured data are text, audio, video, images, and email. Velocity refers to the speed at which big data is generated and must be processed and analyzed. In many cases, sets of big data are updated on a real or near real-time basis instead of the daily, weekly, or monthly updates. Veracity is about the truth and authenticity of the data and what can you do with it. Value refers to the purpose, scenario, or business outcome that needs to be addressed. For example, does the data have value? Is it worth being stored or collected? Variability here refers to what extent and how fast is the structure of your data changing? And how often does the meaning of your data change? So now that we know what data is, it is more important to know what to do with the data. This is where data analytics is needed. Data analytics is a process of collecting, organizing, and analyzing large data sets to discover patterns and other useful information. Data analytics can help organizations to better understand the information contained within the data and will also help identify the data that is most important to the business and future business decisions. Data science is multidiscipline, which includes data analysis, statistics, 
and machine learning. Machine learning is about using algorithms to extract data, learn from it, and then forecast future trends. A good example of machine learning implementation is Facebook. Facebook's machine learning algorithm gathers a lot of data about the behavior of their users. Based on one's previous behavior, the algorithm predicts interests and recommends articles and notifications on the news feed. So we all experience Facebook differently. Data science is mainly used to make decisions and predictions. It can be confusing to differentiate between data analytics and data science. Even though both are interconnected, they provide different results and use different approaches or tools. If data science is a home for all the methods and tools, data analytics is a small room in that house. Data analytics is more specific and concentrated than data science. Data analysis involves answering questions generated for better business decision making. It uses existing information to uncover data that requires action. Data analytics focuses on specific areas with specific goals. On the other hand, data science focuses on discovering new questions that you might not have realized needed answering to drive innovation, to drive creativity. Data analytics focuses more on viewing the historical data in context, while data science focuses more on machine learning and models that allow us to do prediction. Let me give you an overview on the importance of big data analytics. After this, we will consider specific case studies. First of all, cost reduction. Big data technologies bring significant cost advantages when it comes to storing large amounts of data and they can identify more efficient ways of doing business. Businesses are able to analyze information immediately and make decisions based on what they have learned, so there's faster and better decision making. Analytics have the ability to discover customer needs and satisfaction, giving customers what they want. This enables more companies to create new products to meet customers' needs. Big data analytics help organizations gather their data and use it to identify new opportunities. Therefore, it leads to smarter business decisions, more efficient operations, higher profits, and happier customers. Next, we are going to look at five big companies that uses big data analytics to produce big results. Netflix is a good example of a big brand that uses big data analytics for targeted advertising. With over 100 million subscribers, the company collects huge data. If you are a subscriber, you are familiar to how they send you suggestions of the next movie you should watch. Basically, this is done using your past search and watch data. This data is used to give them insights on what interests the subscriber most. Netflix estimates that its algorithm saves 1 billion a year in value from customer retention. Netflix collects big data of our behavior or viewing habits and uses this data to create a better experience for you and me. It collects this data from various events or the actions that we take. For example, our ratings, our searches, the date of the movie or show that was watched, on which device, when the program is paused and so on. After gathering the data, the real value comes from processing the data to reveal cool and useful insights. Let's look at some of the examples. Using data analytics, Netflix selects the top personalized recommendations, focusing only on titles that have high ranking. And based on your viewing history, Netflix will show personalized videos that are trending now, so everyone will have a different user experience. Netflix also sorts your recently viewed titles and estimates whether you will continue watching or rewatch. This makes it easier for you to access the videos that you want to watch. I like this video to video similarity algorithm. Based on what I previously watched, Netflix recommends similar video to me. 
Do you agree that with these personalized features, you are more excited to use the application? Google is a top champion when it comes to big data. With the help of different big data tools and techniques, Google is capable of exploring millions of websites and fetch you the right answer or information within milliseconds. The first question that comes to our mind is, how can Google perform such complex operations so efficiently? The answer is big data analytics. Google uses big data tools and techniques to understand our requirements based on search history, locations, trends, and so on. Then it goes through an algorithm where complex applications are done, and then Google displays the sorted or ranked results to match our requirement. The data collected can save many people. Google works with the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to track when users are entering search terms related to flu topics and predict which regions may experience outbreaks. This will enable health authorities to provide more help and resources to the affected regions. Facebook is considered the world's most popular social media network with more than 2 billion monthly active users worldwide. Facebook stores enormous amounts of user data, making it a huge data wonderland. Every day, we feed Facebook database with tons and tons of information. Every 60 seconds, 136,000 photos are uploaded. 510,000 comments are posted. 293,000 status updates are posted. This is a lot of data. At first, this information may not seem to mean very much. But with data like this, Facebook knows who our friends are, what we look like, where we are, what we are doing, our likes, our dislikes, and so much more. I think Facebook has enough data to know us better than some of our friends or even our family members. Let me share with you how I personally use the data analytics provided by Facebook ads. Based on their analytics, I know which ads or which posts perform better. The results show that ads with video, memes and stories perform better. So I should create more video content and write stories to have more engagements. Facebook also provides me with graphs and charts to show me the demographics of those who engage with me. So this is what we call data visualization. Grab is another big data company that we are familiar with. Grab analyzes millions of user data to optimize customer experience. Data is a huge asset at Grab. With this huge amount of data, they are able to analyze the travel patterns as well as the preferences and the likes and dislikes of their customers. And with that, they are able to improve on their products. In food delivery, Grab uses artificial intelligence and big data to understand our preferences so that they can recommend restaurants and food items that are localized, trending and customized to our taste. This enhances user experience and motivates us to use their applications. In 2019, Grab and NUS set up an AI lab to develop Singapore's transportation system. They use big data to build better models to predict traffic congestion, traffic incidents, and travel times. With this data, they can inform the drivers to move to areas of high demand so that they get more business and people get their transports. Alibaba uses big data on online retailing, inventory management, logistic, insurance, and loan financing. Alibaba uses big data to understand their shoppers. They are using its customer data expertise to drive online to offline conversions in China. So the future of retail in China is both online and offline. In China, there's probably 2,000 Wi-Fi providers and many are giving the Wi-Fi for free because they are trying to get the data and that data is worth a lot more. Alibaba uses Wi-Fi sniffers and beacons to harvest first-party data about store visitors. The big data is used to determine traffic flows in stores, areas of longer engagement or even bounce rate. 
how many customers enter a store and then leave quickly. This information helps offline retailers to make decisions on anything from the layout of the store to determine the effectiveness of their coupon. So beacons are used in retail to send digital coupons or invitations to customers that are passing by. Let's view some insights to this report by World Economic Forum on the future of jobs. It reported on how the job market will be affected by the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. It found that the pandemic has caused the job market to change faster than expected and indicates that the future of work or jobs of tomorrow are already here. Let me share you some of the statistics. The report includes the profile of Singapore. An interesting survey is how likely or very likely on a five-point scale for the companies to adopt these technologies as part of its growth strategy. The top five technologies are encryption and cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, text, image and voice processing, and big data analytics. Today, many companies realize the value of a data-driven business strategy and need specialized individuals to provide insight into the constant flow of collected information. Data analysts and scientists are among the top five positions that will grow in demand as we continue to digitize our physical world. While data analysts and data scientists both work with data, the main difference lies in what they do with it. Data analysts examine large data sets to identify trends, develop charts, and create visual presentations to help businesses make strategic decisions. Data scientists design and construct new processes for data modeling and production using prototypes, algorithms, predictive models, and also customized analysis. Data cleansing is one of the tasks that are performed by both data analysts and data scientists. Why do we need to clean data? What can go wrong with your data? I would like to share a simple task with you about data cleansing so that you can understand what data analysts and data scientists do. Here are some examples of problems that we may encounter with the data. There may be inconsistent number of records in the data, invalid values, for example, we expect numbers but there are alphabets in the data. They may be missing data or incorrect format, for example, incorrect format for the date. And there may be also errors in a unit of measurements. This is a sample data from an Excel document. It contains the invoice number, stock code, description, quantity, invoice date, unit price, customer ID, and country. As you can see, there are some problems with the data. Some data are actually missing, they are inconsistent data, and we have data with incorrect format as well. So in order for the data analysts and data scientists to use this data, they need to first of all clean the data up. For example, replacing the missing data with some default value. So this is where we need tools for big data analytics. So of course, we cannot change this data manually because you have tens of thousands of records that you need to actually review. So you need tools to actually help us to clean the data and then we can use this data effectively. To become a data analyst or data scientist, the emphasis is on learning digital skills, data analysis, computer science and information technology. What do you think is an important digital skill to learn in this 21st century? It is programming or coding. In general, a data analyst is someone who uses technical skills to retrieve data, organize, and analyze it to discover meaningful insights. One of the must-have skills for data analysts is programming. Programming is the act of writing a computer program or code. What is a computer program? What is a computer code? Computer program or code is actually a language, a language that the computer can understand. Basically, a computer program is a set of instructions that tells the computer what to do. 
Like a language, a program has a syntax or rules that you need to follow. So if you want the computer to print something, you should write code to display a message on the screen. Now, I want to introduce a programming language called Python. Python is a language for AI and data analytics. Udo Van Rossum, a Dutch programmer, is the creator of this general purpose programming language. He started working on it in 1989 and is now among the most popular languages in use. The first version was released in 1991 which is 30 years ago. So one of the must-have skills for data analysts is Python programming. Python is a powerful statistical programming language used to perform advanced analysis and predictive analytics on big data sets. Python is simple to use and yet powerful. You can use it to create web applications, do cool stuff like artificial intelligence and machine learning, which are related to robotics. Python can be used to analyze data such as sales or transactions to see which product performs better. This is part of data science. In data visualization, Python is able to generate graph and charts. Using line graph or charts, you can easily identify certain patterns and trend. And Python is also used to do things like face recognition or image processing. Why are we learning Python? Python is chosen because it is one of the most popular programming languages in the world. Many big names use Python for their products or services. Some of these are NASA, Google, Facebook, Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube. That's why Python developers are in demand. So now that you know what big data is, what data analytics is, what data science is, and also how five big companies use big data to get big results. So we also know that one of the must-have skills for big data analysts is programming. So what should you do? What steps can you take to be a data analyst or data scientist? You can start by learning the fundamentals of Python programming. So in this online course, there are altogether 10 lessons. You will learn about input and output, how you read data from the keyboard, how you display onto the screen. You will learn about the different data types, how you manipulate them, and then how your program can make decisions and repeat a set of instructions. You will also learn how to store your data in lists and dictionary. And another important concept in programming is random number generator and also the use of functions. To make the lesson interesting, so I've included graphical user interface and animation as well. Now let me share with you some of the applications that you will learn how to create, starting with this password generator app. So you will learn how to write a program to generate a password by getting the user to enter how many letters they would like to have and how many numbers they would like to have. And then your program will generate a new password for them. You will also learn how to create a simple encryption and decryption application called Caesar Cipher. Because I want to make the learning fun for the students, so you will also learn how to develop a simple game. So in this game, you will learn about animation. After equipping yourself with the fundamental knowledge, you can move on to the intermediate level. You will learn how to create the popular snake game and a different programming style called object-oriented programming. You will also learn how to work with files, how you read from the file and how you write to the file. I started this online programming course in December last year. So I'm so encouraged by the testimonials that I've received. And most of these students have zero programming knowledge. And I have a student as young as 12 years old as well. I've also written articles for a local newspaper. And through these articles, I really want to encourage all to become a digital maker instead of just a digital user. So Python is chosen because it is the language of AI and data analytics. I have been teaching programming for the past 26 years, and Python is one of the easiest programming language to learn. Yet it is versatile and is a big demand for Python programmers. These are recent statistics. Even though Java has the highest 
job postings requests, but the projected growth for Python is actually 24%, which is actually the highest. Whereas in most other programming languages, they are experiencing a negative projected growth. If we look at the salaries of most popular programming languages, we can see that Python has a high projected 10 year growth as compared to the other programming languages. These Python courses will help you kickstart your programming journey from basic level to intermediate. I'll share the links in the description for you to view the curriculum. Thank you so much for listening to this talk. Do remember to like, share and subscribe. Thank you and as always, happy coding.